It's not every day we get to do an executive sedan shootout as this segment has hit a bit of a dead end due to the popular rise of the SUVs. But after the launch of the 10th generation Civic, we decided to find out how this sedan fares against the current segment leader, the Skoda Octavia and the world's best selling sedan, the Toyota Corolla. This is also the first time the Civic is powered by a diesel engine, the same 1.6 litre engine which powers the CRV. Till the BS6 norms kicks in in April 2020, we still believe the diesel variants will outsell the petrol ones. Therefore, let's find out if this comeback kid puts some life in this segment. As mentioned earlier, the Honda Civic is powered by the 1.6 litre diesel engine and is mated with a 6-speed manual transmission. That's right, Honda has not introduced an automatic version for the diesel. Now the engine may sound quite loud from the outside, but thankfully the in-cabin noise levels are low thanks to the insulation. The good thing about this 118 bhp engine is that it hardly offers any turbo lag as it accelerates as low as from 1400 rpm. On the high end side, this engine lacks the punch that we are used to that diesel engines provide in the mid-range power band. Now I'm not saying it doesn't offer any power, it provides decent poke and the car does feel fast but just lacks the character. This is also due to tall gearing ratio as Honda is focused on fuel efficiency. This is the reason why the Civic is also the most fuel efficient sedan in its segment. Now we all know that the Civic looks extremely sporty from the outside. But is it really sporty when you are behind the wheel? Well, the answer is yes and no. Yes, because the Civic handles extremely well, it takes on corners and the best part is it gives you a lot of confidence while negotiating turns. The other good thing is that the steering wheel is weighed decently well, it's not too heavy neither too light and it is extremely direct. Now coming to the ride quality, the Civic is quite impressive in this department as well. Keeping in mind that it comes with 17 inch alloy wheels which is the biggest in the segment. What's impressive about the Civic is that it easily carpets potholes and even though you might feel a bump when it goes over a ditch, there's nothing uncomfortable about it. Now keeping in mind all the three cars in this test, the suspension setup of the Civic is slightly firm but it does not compromise the ride quality for the passengers. The Civic has always been known for its edgy stand-up design and the current generation is no different. A lot of that has to do with its coupe-like design, the slender LED headlamps with Honda's typical solid chrome strip on the nose and the indicators placed unorthodoxly in the side of the front wheel arches. In our opinion, the Civic looks the best from the rear with the huge C-shaped LED tail lamps. The Civic also comes with LED fog lamps which is a first in the segment. So it's safe to say that the Civic looks stunning from any and all angle. Now when you step inside the Civic, the cabin is quite futuristic. It has a multi-layered dashboard. It has leather, it has soft touch materials and even an aluminium strip that runs across the dash. If you scratch the surface and take a closer look at the hard plastic quality, it is slightly disappointing and the switches are not up to the mark, at least not for this segment. The new Civic also now boasts of a floating 7-inch infotainment system. Now it is quite impressive to look at but the touch could be a bit more intuitive and sometimes a lag does pop up. Now the infotainment system offers Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. The annoying part about this infotainment system is that the USB port is hidden behind the system. Therefore, it is quite cumbersome. When it comes to practicality, it is the first car in the segment to come with an electric brake. Therefore, there is no handbrake lever in the center console, ensuring that there is a lot more cubby holes available. The Civic also boasts of many segment first features like for example, the lane watch feature which is basically a camera neatly tucked in the left outside rear view mirror which negates any sort of blind spots. The other standout feature is that you can actually start the engine without stepping into the car. This way you can ensure that the cabin is cool before you step into the cabin. When we talk about executive saloons, we have to talk about the rear comfort as most of the owners sit in the back. 
Now the Civic may have low seatings and getting in and out of the cabin can be a bit of a hassle. But the Civic provides plenty of knee room as well as leg room. But where it loses out in points is the headroom area because of the sloping roof line. Also because of the coupe like design, the rear window is slightly small and it doesn't feel as airy in the back as the other two sedans. The Skoda Octavia is easily the most powerful sedan in the shootout. With 141 bhp of power, this car takes off from the word go. And let's not forget, this version that we are driving is mated with a DSG gearbox. Now this automatic transmission is more like a mind reader. It upshifts exactly when you want it. Now it comes with paddle shifters, but trust me, you don't need it as this gearbox is so precise. We all know that Skoda cars are known for its handling capabilities and the Octavia is no different. It takes on corners, offers you a lot of confidence and grip at the same time. Where the Skoda loses out is the steering wheel as it feels very light and does not offer the sort of feedback the Civic provides. Therefore, it feels slightly vague. As comfort is the key factor for these executive saloons, the Skoda offers a pliant ride and is at par with the Civic. The Octavia received a mild facelift two years ago and the first thing that stands out are the quad headlamps and of course the LED lights that are smartly tucked inside them. The front butterfly grille is now all black and the bonnet is a lot more pronounced. The lower lip of the front bumper now sports a thin chrome line running across it just like the Superb and the rear LED lamps have been redesigned ever so subtly. All in all, the Octavia retains the typical Volkswagen family's DNA by remaining muscular yet having a simple and a clean design. The Skoda Octavia's cabin is solid built and the materials used and the fit and finish is simply class leading. Unlike the Civic's busy dashboard design, the Octavia comes with a simple and smart looking design. The Octavia's infotainment system comes with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and the mirror link as well. The good thing about this infotainment system is that the USB is accessible as it is on the center console. Skoda has also upgraded the Octavia as it now comes with an all digital instrument cluster which looks premium and it's easier to read. One thing we must mention is that the dual tone cabin ensures that it feels airy and the big windows also add to this factor. The Octavia comes with plenty of features like 8 airbags, front and rear parking sensors and a lot more features including a rear AC vent like the Civic. The Octavia offers the best knee room and leg room among the three cars even though it has the shortest wheelbase. The seats of the Octavia are high therefore getting in and out of the cabin is quite easy. Now they are a bit firm the seats but they offer plenty of comfort but when it comes to support there's nothing like the Civics. Toyota Corolla is well known for offering one of the best ride qualities in the segment and it continues to do so due to its soft suspension setup. The Toyota Corolla is an ideal chauffeur driven car which takes you from point A to point B without any hassles. The Corolla is powered by an 87bhp 1.4 litre diesel engine. Now it may sound quite underpowered but trust me when you're driving it in urban traffic conditions it has enough punch to negotiate the traffic situation. The 1.4 litre engine is a very refined motor but unfortunately it lacks any sort of urgency even at low speeds. The Corolla easily gobbles up any sort of potholes and makes sure that the ride quality is never compromised. This is the reason why most of the Corolla owners prefer to sit in the back. The Corolla is definitely showing signs of age as it showcases the typical old-school sedan design. The all-chrome V-shaped front grille and the swept-back LED headlamps try their level best to rejuvenate some youthfulness in this sedan, but sadly, it looks quite jaded, especially in front of the Civic. To be fair, the Corolla is the senior citizen in this comparison and it's in the final stage of its life cycle. Therefore, 
The design looks quite aged and it has limited features. That still doesn't explain why the Corolla diesel doesn't come with an infotainment system even though the steering wheel comes with control buttons. The petrol variant of the Corolla does get an infotainment system but it's bare basics and does not come with CarPlay or Android Auto. When it comes to the cabin's plastic quality, it's below par when you compare it against the Octavia. But what works for the Corolla is that the cabin is spacious and thanks to the big windows, it feels airy inside the cabin. The Corolla does not compromise in safety, therefore it comes with 7 airbags. Another thing which is quite surprising is that the Corolla and the Octavia both come with lumbar support while the Civic doesn't. The Corolla's rear bench is wide and comfortable. Not just that, it also offers ample knee room. But like most of the sedans, it doesn't offer under thigh support. What sets a Corolla apart from other sedans is that the central tunnel is not pronounced. Therefore, the floor is flat. This means that three adults can sit in the back. Corolla is also the only sedan that offers reclining rear seats, which is a boon as comfort means everything in this segment. What is slightly disappointing is that the Corolla does not offer rear AC vents. Instead, you have two charging ports here. So the golden question arises, can the Civic shake the Skoda's Apple car? Well, the Civic does score a lot of points, especially when it comes to looks. It is fresh, the sexy coupe looks, the interiors look youthful, sporty, and it has a lot of features. Unfortunately, when it comes to the engine and the power, Honda has played it safe and they're focused more on fuel efficiency. Now coming to the senior citizen of this shootout, the Corolla is aging and drastically it's aging and it shows as well. But technically speaking, the Corolla still offers the most comfortable ride, has a spacious cabin and yes, the 1.4 litre diesel engine is the least powerful but it takes you from point A to point B stress-free. All in all, the Octavia still remains the most complete sedan. Yes, it is the most expensive car in the segment but the premiumness it offers, it remains the best in the segment.